Hello and welcome to the big picture. As the summer months begin, many parts of the country are set to face one of its worst water crisis. Already in many states, the reservoir levels have come down alarmingly, while drinking water situation in states like Maharashtra is equally alarming. Ganga, which is supposed to provide water to one, one third of the population of India, is witnessing lower and lower levels every year. Ten states had declared drought last year, and with depleting water levels in reservoirs, it's getting worse. In 91 of the major reservoirs in the country, water level is just 25% of the capacity, with monsoon still two months away. The situation is acute in western parts of the country, while in southern states like Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, water levels were just 17% of the reservoir capacity. A combination of factors, apart from inadequate monsoon, has led to what is being seen as one of the worst water crises we are witnessing in recent decades. What are these factors and how is it affecting the lives of people as well as agriculture and other operations? Is there a solution to it? We will discuss all this today with Professor A.L. Ramanathan of School of Environmental Sciences, JNU, Imanshu Tucker, environmentalist and water activist, Dr. Kamta Prasad, former Vice President, India Water Partnership, Sanjay Hegde, Senior Advocate in the Supreme Court, and Nitin Sethi, Associate Editor of Business Standard. Welcome to all of you. Himanshu, how serious is this problem? Well, I think the, in the post-independence India, this is going to be the worst summer that India has faced. And Maharashtra is possibly facing the worst uh, um, impact of this drought. Uh, there is, of course, this back-to-back -back rainfall deficit last two years has played a role. But I think much bigger role has been played by uh, lack of uh, prior uh, action, uh, complete lack of mismanage—I mean, complete mismanagement—and real lack of any clearly defined policy and mechanism to allocate water according to the priorities. So, for example, in Maharashtra, which is facing the worst drought, I mean, you can see it's a complete uh, failure of the water resource development model India is face, uh, ex uh, practicing which is a state in India which has the largest number of big dams? Maharashtra. 1,845 out of 5,174 5, dams are in Maharashtra, 36%. It is by far the large, and it is, how much area is irrigated in Maharashtra? 15.5%. National average is 46%. But that state is, state is also transferring 3 billion cubic meters of water outside the Bhima and Krishna basin to Konkan area. It is the largest producer of sugar and sugar cane. It's uh, indulging in practices like uh, IPL is only a, a symbol. But if you go to, I was just in last week in Pune, I saw a whole valley full of golf courses completely green, just next to Pune. So you can see a lot of a seriously problematic situation and it's, it's, there is some scarcity, but it could have been managed if better with better utilization of the available resources and uh, uh, involvement of the people. Dr. Kamta Prasad, is, is, this, is this a problem of management? Yes, it is. See, it is both also problem of management and the policies. It is, it is not that it has come from today. It is just one year from now. You see, the droughts have been coming here from time to time. Every, in a, a cycle of five years, right. every two or three, it's a drought even there. But look at the situation. In 1951, the per capita availability of water around 52 cubic meter. Today, it is around 17, it is around 15 cubic meters. So what a fall. Population rising. And population at, this, at the same time, demand for water is increasing. Per capita demand for water is increasing because of industrialization, change in habits, culture, etc. and so on. Because of urbanization and so on. So gap is, is not there is something new. Signals are coming for a long time. But at the same time, we have been neglecting water for a long time also. We, we declare for the rooftop, well, water is precious, water is life, jali jivan hai. But in practice, what happens? That is the practical. Water is not getting the importance that it deserves. In the, say, if you take the period from 1951 to 1968, 17 year period, the reservoir capacity increased by 5.6 million hectares per year. Next 30 years, it went down 
to a very very low very low figure at area under irrigation similar similar decline investment which was 23 percent in the first five year plan 14 15 percent in the subsequent plan now it has gone to five six percent so declining in facilities on water despite the fact that well water scarcity is increasing is one secondly if that was situation then water is not managed efficiently that not the case the mismanagement of water wastes of water deteriorating water quality uh, and so this is com- this is compounding mismanagement is very much there which whatever whether you take canal irrigation tubal irrigation drinking water everywhere mismanagement is there okay uh, so, professor ramnanathan yes. is is this do you agree with uh, himanshu that this probably the worst uh, situation we are facing in several decades yes so this is the i am agree with him but it is going to happen again and again in the changing situations one is that uh, the climate that is actually and elino year added to that in the last year and also the population is increasing and the event if you see the rainfall events the frequency has decreased but intensity has increased because of the climate change in that one so that means this management is the best we have to do it in the future if you have a better management then like you have to follow the countries like the israel and other arab countries which without water also they are managing existing water and also we have to include the csr of these all these uh, ipl and other people it's good that you have the matches and everything to have a golf course and all but we have to make them sure that they are recycling the water and using it uh, for the purpose of these things because that is the way by which we can reduce the use of all this fresh water which is very precious and also you know that as he pointed out the ground water level is decreasing throughout the india and also if you see the ganges we have enough ground water but the thing is that water quality is deteriorating quality of serious, the serious serious deterioration in water quality yes 60% of the ganges basin if you see is, 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 is uh, contaminated contaminated naturally also some arsenic because of the over exploitation arsenic is come and also nitrate and other pollutions so there is a serious concern about the surface water quality almost is uh, gone because we don't uh, have a very good, good treatment system in entering into that uh, thing because we try to follow the Uh, western like thames and all but certain system may not work even they are also facing problem like building a structure on the sides of the river is problematic so we have to have a indigenous system developed to maintain our rivers then the ground water because ultimately the ground water and canals are going to recharge our uh, river and uh, canals are going to recharge our besides rainfall if the rainfall failures your canal and river is going to recharge the ground water that is actually a natural filter because if that is contaminated it takes millions of years to be rectified so the management is the best we have to go follow a better management for the water okay uh, sanjay sanjay you know we we the problem the problem of water is also the problem of it's also a, a political problem because we have we have witnessed over the year the number of the number of uh, water disputes which we which we witness among between states you think that has been one of the reasons the way the, the way these disputes have not been resolved for years is that one of the reasons why we we are witnessing this kind of situation now that is one of the reasons but it is not the only reason you will see after all water uh, even when it when there's a dispute between two states it remains within the country except when it flows out to the sea that's the uh, arabian sea or the bay of the bengal but before that uh, who is to get how much of the river and uh, in what quantities at what times those are the matters of disputes which uh, tend to linger on in the interstate water disputes tribunal and that is also primarily because the politicians prefer that matters uh, remain pending in the tribunal resolved in part not resolved in part so that they can tell their people that look we are fighting for you we are fighting for your rights but the courts are not deciding uh the interstate water disputes is only one part of the problem the basic pa- uh, problem is of climate change different shifting weather patterns as also are water intensive are cultivation 
which uh, in uh, today's day and age, given the per capita uh, availability of water, there needs to be a policy rethink on that. The point is that we must all realize that we are dependent on the monsoon. Previously, it was uh, said that the Indian economy was a gamble in the monsoon. Yes. Now, life in India will all, may also turn to be a gamble in the monsoon if monsoons continually fa uh, fail and there is, a, there is a pattern of climate change. We have to ensure, A, that we conserve water, B, that water is not wasted, and C, it is not contaminated. Many of our rivers, like the Yamuna outside Delhi, for instance, are dead rivers. They are stinking in, uh, uh, dumps of sewerage. We do not value our water enough, and we do not tend to re uh, reuse it. That is where a lot of the problem lies, and, the, and more so because we are living in that part of the, of the world uh, where uh, uh, climate change is going to hit us the hardest. Right. It, it has often been speculated that the next war between India and its neighbors is going to be sparked off by water more than anything else. Not just in India, across the world. It is time that our administrators <laughs> probably think of doing a national policy which... Uh, applies across the board to all uh, all states of India, at least in relation to consumption of water. Okay. Okay. Uh, Nitin, Nitin, there was supposed to be a water policy in 2012. What mm. has happened to that? How is it being followed? You know, are there any serious attempts to reevaluate it? I think, Girish, what's happened is, this is largely true of government across the board. We've looked at these issues sectorally. So there's an environment ministry which looks after pollution of water. There's a central groundwater board that looks at what's happening under the floor. There's a riverine system. There's a national river system. There are state ownerships. Now, everything's distributed across the board. There is no unified way of looking at it and saying, this is a water system. If it's integrated, its management needs to be integrated as well. You can't segregate and say one department looks after one water table. The other looks after what's happening to rivulets. To give you an example... I think few months back, the government was contemplating that we must look at what are the aquifers that you must save and what are the kind of forest zones that you must save to make sure the first level perennial rivers are safe. It came back and this, the government came back and said, oops, we don't even know which ones are those. We've never mapped them. Now, that's the level we are reaching at. Now, if you look at, again, long-term policies on water, one, we've got these policies which says we'll build up more bore wells in areas of people who have landed who have lands to begin with. We are not addressing the caste issue of saying, where do these pumps come up? They come up with rich farmers. Again, it doesn't get supply to the poorest who are most vulnerable. Then we have weird agriculture things. Like if you won't believe, in Bundelkhand, we grow mentha, which is one of, it's almost a water sucker plant. We grow mentha in Bundelkhand when we know it's a drought prone area, perennially a drought prone area. Now, that's the kind of policy net that we're trying to move through. Then in the short term, now, we have a National Disaster Management Authority. It perhaps on time, at few times, it reacts very well to events, but it does not react to processes of stress. Now, this is a time two months ago, the government should have activated in saying this is a crisis. A crisis is not just a two-day event. It can be an entire season. It should have activated and said, what are the things we need to keep in place? Things like Himanshu is talking about saying prioritize water use, send the messaging out saying use less, use in a better way. Now, that entire process does, just doesn't exist across the country for us at the moment. Okay. Himanshu, <clears throat> agricultural practices, that is one of the major reasons <clears throat> you would, you, I'm, I'm sure you would agree. You know, paddy, sugar cane, growing it. Has, what has been the effort to, to ensure that the farmers understand, you know, th these problems? See, uh... Agriculture is the biggest user of water. That's to more than 80%. Yeah. More than 80% of the water gets used there. But I think the bigger picture we need to understand is the title of your show. Big picture of India is that India's water lifeline. It's not rivers. It's not canals. It's not big dams. The groundwater is India's water lifeline. More than two-thirds of irrigation is coming from groundwater. More than 85% of rural water supply comes from groundwater. So whether we like it or not, whether we want it or not, our water lifeline is going to be groundwater in years to come. So that so means whole, recharging has to be a... Our whole water policy, planning, practices, projects has to be focused on how to sustain that water lifeline. 
So big projects are not going to do that. The storage is that Kamta Prasad ji said is actually the storage is in the aquifer. We need to use that storage is. No, no. And, let and, and, and let me just complete. Now, coming to your question about the cropping pattern. See, the farmers are going to decide cropping pattern majorly based on what he is going to get out of and it. But there are, you know, the government, for example, paddy is cultivated in Punjab and it's depleting the water levels hugely. Now, there is a technique, for example, system of rice intensification, which can reduce the water requirement for paddy cultivation by up to 50 percent. If that is implemented, say, in Punjab, can you imagine the kind of groundwater use that will reduce? That's the first thing. So, but the government is doing practically nothing to do that. Secondly, well, you also agree with uh, Nitin's point that there is no unified thinking on these lines and you know, there, there are yes. sectoral thinkings. Well, sectoral thinking is there and it, to an extent it will remain. See, water is a complex, you know, you need it for urban area, for industries, mm. for rural areas, for irrigation, for rivers. So, you know, there and groundwater. But the one, pro, one thing what he says is correct. Central Water Commission and Central Groundwater Boards work in compartmentalize. They don't t even talk to each other. Whereas the whole groundwater is the water lifeline, then the whole water sector has to come together to sustain that water lifeline. Now, what do you, how do you sustain the groundwater lifeline? A, you understand and acknowledge that reality. B, you ensure that the groundwater recharge systems are protected. Rivers, forests, wetlands, local water bodies, these are groundwater recharge systems. Thirdly, you enhance them, what you are saying rightly. We need to enhance groundwater and most importantly, fourthly, you need to regulate groundwater use because only if you don't regulate, then what is happening in Punjab will happen. All is happening in many parts. Ha already will happen. happened now. And, but government is doing absolutely nothing seriously to regulate groundwater use, and that can only be regulated at aquifer level. It cannot be regulated sitting in Delhi or Bhopal or Ahmedabad. It has to be regulated at the aquifer level, and for that we need to map the aquifers, which are we are starting to do now. You're just starting to do that. Yeah. Dr. Kamta Prasad, why was it not done all these years? No, see, was there, there no awareness about it or just the chalta hai attitude? Because the chalta hai attitude is there very much, I agree with you. But let us understand, you see, the basic legal, social constraints which are there. In the case of groundwater, for example, let us not put too much hope on groundwater. Take the case of the water is felt problem in drought prone areas. In the case of drought prone areas, most of the drought prone areas, the water are, are all the ground water over exploited or they are in critical semi critical blocks. The mapping has been done already. It is there. And it, it has become over exploited because of the fact that, well, there is a legal clause, so called easement act, according to which farmers have the control over the water which is been in their land, easement, so called easement act. They know. Supreme Court has passed the uh, order in 1946, 1996. But creating national water regulatory authority, but it had no effect at all because the states are not willing to listen to that. Some of the states have also passed regulatory laws, but they are toothless laws, as, as one chief minister said, they are toothless laws. So, uh, over exploitation of groundwater is going on because farmers are at by their own self interest. I discussed on this issue with the Punjab chief minister a few, a few months ago. He said, What can I do? It is a choice between economics and ecology. Ecology demand that well further exploitation of water should take place because already water has gone down. But farmers are going by by economics. They are getting rice, more price, more price for that. The pricing policy of the government of India, agriculture pricing policy, throughout favored wheat, 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 wheat rice right. against the crop and that sugar cane. Good that. So sugar exporting sugar and exporting water. So right. that, subsidy, that giving subsidy to export yes, it. Yes. So, so, many things are involved, not only just uh, groundwater and uh, river water, agricultural policy is very much involved there. And what was the question of water policy? We have water policy in 1987, the second policy came in 2002, third policy came in 2012, but it is not implemented, not implemented. States have got their policy, 14 states have got a state water policy, not in, but just a document, a pious document, piece of paper. They are not even aware of many of the what 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 is written, what is written, what is written, written in, in that documents. Okay, that is it, Professor Ramnathan. Yeah. So, you know what? What is the solution to this? Is there, has there been any uh, attempt to find solutions to them? Yeah, attempts. This is the first attempt, as you told that uh, central groundwater had been instructed to map the aquifer 
where there is a contaminated where is a kind of good aquifer and, a and that, that, aquifer. that mapping map, mapping has started only recently it, uh, it's uh, uh, two years back they have started and uh, they have come out with the preliminary aquifer mapping uh, also now they are going to detail if that one is that comes uh, that preliminary result shows that shallow aquifers are contaminated if you go beyond 300 meters there is a good waters available in the gangetic basin and punjab because what happened is that the top aquifers either due to the over exploitation oxidation reduction they are contaminated or due to the fertilizers and pesticides they are getting contaminated that is what happened there but only now they are exploring that how to extract the deeper aquifer without the shallow aquifer contaminate the deeper if you put a puncture on that deeper aquifer that may also allow the percolation of top aquifer to go to the bottom so that is what this mapping has to be done and then they have to delineate the sources because all the almost all the shallow aquifers in the agricultural intensive areas like punjab up bihar all are contaminated because they use excess fertilizers and without because now we are rationalizing it but earlier for example zinc sulfate they use uh, all all those years yeah of... they have been excess uses that is actually contaminated the okay. shallow aquifer San, sanjay sanjay you know the the prioritization of what the prioritization how 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 much prioritization takes place at state level how much politics you know plays a role in this because of course drinking water has to be has to be the top priority in in, in any case but you know, the kind of politics which are which is played how much how much does that play a role well it plays a great deal of uh, uh, at the local level for uh, for instance uh, uh, and uh, the bharatpur bird sanctuary water had to be let out out there so that migratory birds could come there and it, they, that was what was traditionally done but there were times when powerful politicians belonging to one caste in that area said no that is water uh, which should not be let out from the dam but should be used only for agricultural purposes i'm only using this as an illustration we do not have any sense of priority beyond saying that humans for human drinking water first uh, water for uh, domestic use second animals third and then the rest just becomes a matter of, uh, of fighting over the spoils agriculture uh, of course comes immediately thereafter the point is that we neither have a proper uh, degree uh, of uh, prioritization after drinking water nor do we have penalties and uh, punishments for contamination of water sources the reckless use of water I, I, as somebody else on the panel said the um, poisoning of the aquifers all these are avoidable tragedies which could do with much more policy uh, pronouncements plus policing of the same they uh, those are sadly missing and also there is no particular effort on the part of the government to tell people that these are our resources of water and that they have to be conserved and used in the following manner every politician or every leader seems to think that water shortage is a temporary phenomenon shortly before the monsoons right. and then as long as he sits on some yagya or some dharna somewhere they all is fine with the world <laughs> these are knee jerk responses we now need to really go back and at a national level formulate uh, an agreed agenda from which there can't be departures okay uh, nitin the present crisis the next two months will be you know monsoon will be at least two more months to go mm -hmm. you see any serious attempt on part of the governments to you know to at least overcome this crisis to partly at least in the in the next two months so at the moment people what not... we are witnessing in 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 maharashtra for instance you know people getting water once in three weeks and you know, how how are, how are, how how is it going to be resolved at all in the in the, in the short term at least i think at the moment we've only got news girish from little pockets there we've got active journalists working on this thing traditionally but if you hear regional press from all over the country you'll find the water mafia growing in b towns and a towns you'll hear this crisis emerging from pockets you've not heard before now one there has been a management crisis perpetually two we've not looked at climate change and its consequences in the long run 
we're not prepared to look at the same kind of shortages increasing or coming at a time where we're not prepared for it to begin with. At the moment from the government, we've not heard too much. Whether they're having a crisis meeting saying, let's look at it. Again, the National Disaster Management Authority comes under the Home Ministry. Its capability of really looking at it across the board and saying, yes, this is an ecological crisis. It's also a crisis of management. Just get ensuring it doesn't turn into where you have to put Section 144 to manage water. It requires happen. there has to be a prioritization saying how do water tankers manage. Maybe this is the essential commodity that you should be managing instead of wor worrying about which dal you bring in at the moment. Okay, I mean, Himanshu, very quickly. Do you see, do, do you see an effort to overcome this crisis? Not really. So, you know, the, the people are going to need not just water. They will need water in the rural areas, but they will also need employment. They need some cash in hand to take care of their basic needs. And MGNREGA could have been the biggest factor in Even providing that Even it case. can be done. It can be done, but the allocation, if you see in the budget, and if you look at the, uh, the amount already, uh, you know, uh, uh, outstanding amount, it doesn't seem that they, they are serious about it. And if they, they, I think I'm glad Supreme Court has taken this up and I hope they force the government to, to allocate more resources and urgently on that, on that front. And then the state government should be forced to ensure that the people who really need the employment, who want employment, get it. Okay. Yes, Nitin, very quickly. Uh, if you look at Manrega, what's happened is though the budget's been increased by a few thousand crores, the actual labor budget for this year has been cut down by 22 crore exactly. working days. Yes. Yeah. So, this is a misnomer saying, oh, we've added more money. Actually, anyway. with the wage rate going up, we've actually reduced the amount of work we'll Real be giving things, to the yeah. poor in a crisis period. Okay. Okay. Yes, very, very quickly, sir. We don't yeah. have time. Like a food security bill, the only solution to that is that water security bill. We need, that makes us, yeah, well, that will maybe, make maybe sure yes. that everybody will get a... Yes, then maybe, it is to be... Maybe there is a, there is a need for a legislation, <laughs> yeah, some kind of a legislation, a water that, security yeah, legislation yeah, yeah. in this country. We'll have, maybe that is, that is one of the ways to resolve this crisis. But as everybody on my panel says, this is a long-term problem. Yeah. It is not something which can be you know, resolved with one monsoon, which, for which there needs to be a long-term solution and a long-term thinking also. Thanks to all my guests. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue in the big picture same time tomorrow.